Hello again, people. So, first I want to thank all of you for your help. Um, I'm not sure if I could have done this without your help. But here I am. So, uh, some people suggested me uh, to do a test assembly of the spindle in a bench. And that's what I'm doing now. I have some pieces of aluminum between the jaws and also on the underside. And I have the bearing in. Um, and I have the nut in. So this is exactly the same assembly that is going to be in the lathe. Except for this piece. This sim piece which goes here. And um, I now adjusted the bearing. And I think it's a little bit too tight now. Um, the outside ring expanded for maybe half a hundred of a millimeter. Um, it still turns pretty easily, but I can sure feel some resistance. And what's weird is that when I turn it slowly, it's pretty hard to turn. But when I turn it quick, it turns very easily. It actually keeps turning on its own for, for a while. Um, I'm guessing that might be because there is still some lubrication oil and maybe there's uh, maybe the, the oil is starting to uh, do its job when I increase the roller speed a little bit and I'm happy to say that I have now one more machine running so this is my universal tool grinder Jack Mill J40 and it's my only machine that's not made in Soviet Union. This is made in Taiwan in, I think, year 98. Uh, I mean, 89. <laughs> um, and I have a, a magnetic table for it, but, um, and yes, of course, I am trying to use this machine as a surface grinder now. But there is an issue, which is that this grinding head is not supposed to be used for uh, surface grinding. As you can see, there is um, this gap here is very small and that defines um, um, how uh, long of a cut I can make, I mean in the y direction, in the y axis. And turns out um, the sim actually is too wide to be basied in one pass. So what I had to do is I first ground uh, half of it and then I turned it around and then I Grind, uh, ground the other end and it actually worked pretty good like that I got the thickness within one hundredth of a millimeter so I guess that's good and you can also see here uh, I did some um, some resurfacing to the magnetic, magnetic table and this is how far um, the stone will go no further uh, and so at least I can now do some surface grinding, which is very good. And I managed to make the sim pretty good now. It is now ground on both sides. And as I said, the consistency in thickness is within one hundredth of a millimeter, which I think is okay. So, um, what I did after uh, tightening the bedding, um, um, some of you suggested uh, I should make a gauge, a gauge set that I could measure this, this gap, but uh, I took a little bit easier way to do it, and I just started grinding, grinding this sim, uh, taking 500 of each time. And now it fits, I would say it fits perfectly. Uh, there is maybe maximum one or two hundreds of clearance. And I think that's pretty darn good. So, I'm guessing the spindle is now ready to be put back on. But first let me tell you about one, one more problem. And actually, I'm not sure if it's a problem at all. Uh, but the thing is that 
I am able to install the auto race in the headstock by hand, but very, very, very barely. Actually, um, um, I, I don't know if I mentioned, but I have two of these bearings, and this is the auto race of the other bearing, and the inside is right here. And <clears throat> um, so this time I tried to put it again, again, I tried to put it in again. And this time I actually had to use a small piece of wood to knock on it a little bit to get it in. Um, so um, I'm actually sure that this housing should originally be press fit. So the inner race should be press fit in. Um, but I'm guessing well, I, I really don't know, because it's still, I can move it by hand, but very, very, very slightly, extremely slightly. I'm not sure if I can even get it out by hand now. No, I cannot. So maybe the gap is small, so small that when I have the correct about amount of uh, preload on the bearing, it will actually push the outer race outside so much that um, it will press against the housing. And I actually did some measurements uh, in the bearing housing using my bore gauge by Mitutoyo. Um, and there is um, the bearing outside race is 95.5. Let's see if I have it here. This is so this is 75 plus this 20.003, so it's uh, it's 95 and three thousandths of a millimeter over, and the bore is exactly one hundredth of a millimeter smaller than this. So there is one hundredth of a millimeter of clearance. And the bore is consistent, actually. Uh, in my last video, I said in some of the con uh, in some of the comments that the bore isn't quite round, but I reject it, and it actually is perfectly round. I cannot find any inconsistency in it. So uh, I even had a plan B before I came here today. I bought small bottle of this. This is a bearing locker by Loctite. And I'm not sure if I should put it in or not. I really don't know. So, I guess I will try a few things now and decide if it's a good idea to use it or not, because the clearance is very, very, very small. But I still think the clearance is bigger than what it originally was. Hello, people. Uh, the spindle is now back together, and I have adjusted the axial bearings and also the main radial bearing. And let's take a look at it. I would say that's maybe a little under half a hundred. I guess I would have wanted it to be zero, um, but I think what happened, I still didn't grind the seam thin enough. And why? This is, I don't know, I guess the bench testing was not a perfect simulator uh, for just putting the uh, spindle in the headstock. But half a hundred is okay. I was reading the Russian forums about this lathe and um, there they had some kind of an um, 
some kind of manual for adjusting the spindle bearings and it says this should have half a hundred of play but I'm satisfied with it I will not take the spindle off again to grind uh, to grind the sim so that I could I could take the the very last hundreds off and I also think that the spindle turns pretty much the way it should you can sure feel some resistance but it's uh, it's still turning pretty freely when I have when I turn the spindle it will go a little over one turn and I guess that's pretty much right okay I would now say that I am satisfied with the spindle and once again I want to thank you all for your help and your comments and I really hope my videos help somebody else with these same problems and if you have any questions about this please ask me I will do my best to help you And this was my first spindle bearing replacement project ever but I think I really learned a lot from it okay I guess it's now time to um, to put the gear shifting linkages back and start putting the headstock back together yes and my plan today also is to try running the oil pump which is here because when we were uh, looking at this machine in the machine tool cellar um, the oil was not flowing properly but I hope I can find a problem with it I'm thinking there there's just a clogged filter I'm not sure maybe this is filter and I think it's probably full of uh, metal pieces from that broken thrust bearing and also I think this line might be clogged so oh and by the way um, I did put some Loctite to the outer ring of the bearing I think it was a good idea after all no for sure it will not spin at least okay so I guess I will start putting the linkages back now and maybe I will keep you posted on how it goes okay I'll get back to you <laughs>